Morning, Bryce. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Yeah. What's new? Um. Are you still dating one of the twins? Um. Well, it's like, yeah, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's all you need to say. Good morning, Mackenzie and Jacob. How are you guys today? Good. Good. Anything going on? Like, what's new? Anything? Hi, Vern. Hi, Caitlin. You guys doing okay? Don't forget to greet in the chat. Put something in there. Give me an emoji or say hi or something just as a record of your presence. If you could, please. That's what I just said. I just said that. Mackenzie. Good to Morgan to y'all. I just put up my Christmas tree yesterday. My first fake tree ever. Never had a fake tree before, but seems like the Christmas trees are all out of stock. So had to go with the old fakey. Well, we're going to start with our warm-up. Um, morning, Zach. Don't forget to uh, put something in the chat for me, if you wouldn't mind. Okay. So we'll start with the warm-up. And um, once everyone gets in here, seems like it's... I usually give a couple minutes of... What wait time? What's your guys' favorite? Like, what do you do during the holidays that's like your favorite thing to do? Anyone have anything like, yeah, get together and make something besides the present thing? What's anything ring a bell that you do at Christmas time that you would have to do? Eat cookies, yeah. What kind of cookies do you make, Caitlin? Are they the rollout kind or do you buy them? What do you do? Oh, cool. The lights. Um, just around town, Brianna? Or do you um, like go downtown? What do you do? Sugar cookies, that's good. I think we're going to make, thinking like Buckeyes, Puppy Chow, um, Christmas cookies. We sometimes do granola. I'm trying to think what else. Oh, I make, uh, if you've ever had a uh, Rice Krispie treat, you can make um, wreaths. And um, you can make those out of cornflakes and basically make them the same way, only you make them into little wreaths and then put little peppermints, little red peppermints on them. Those are my favorite. What else? Hmm, I'm trying to think what else we make. Sometimes check mix. That's always good. Tasty little treat. Brianna, would you recommend like a specific road? or a specific side of Battle Creek that usually has a lot of lights on it? Well, let me know if you think about it, put it in the chat. But we're gonna get started. So we're gonna go into our warm ups. So I'm gonna get there right now. Do, 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 do. All right. All 
All right. Well, if you can remember the street that's on, let me know, because that would be a fun thing to do for my family. All right. Where am I? What am I doing? Oh, yeah. The warm up. Okay. So, um, I'm trying to get that blue off. So, you will probably find, and I need to bring your warm ups up to a quarter two weeks seven. Let me go grab those so that you don't have to search for them. Okay. I put a couple things in here. I'll talk about them here in just a minute, but let's do the warm up. If I forget, please let me know so I don't forget. Now, the reason there's two warm ups in here is because. In some of the classes, I got some emails that they couldn't see the ones for the remaining days of the week. So I this used to say template. So I don't know. I'm going to open it just to see because it, it used to not have the other ones on there. But maybe it somehow has switched. And, uh, of course, it's not going to load because I'm on camera. That's so nice. I'm taking offense to that. Okay. Let's see what happens. Oh, they're all there. I don't know. <laughs> One of the days it wasn't opening, so I added them, and now it's there. So I don't know. Anyway, as long as you can see them, that's all that matters. So uh, remember you're doing N1, and so today's question is what has to be on a food label? Don't Google it, please. Just think about a food label. Think about what's on it, whether it has to be there or not, you know. You're not going to get uh, points taken away if it's wrong. So here we go in three, two, one. You got two minutes. Make sure it's in a complete sentence. The uh, next time we meet will be our last and final warm up. And there'll actually be 12 points because we actually did warm up six times instead of our other four times. So um, it'll be worth 12 points. So make sure that you either turn them in Thursday or make sure they get in by Friday. Um, you know, if you add up all the weeks that we've had and how many warm-ups, it's quite a bit of points. So make sure that you've been doing them right along and getting your points because it just, why not? It's a simple thing to do. Oh, got about a minute left. Try to finish up if you can. Thirty seconds. Okay, so you should be done with that. Um, I just want to go into Google Classroom and talk about a couple things because last hour I forgot and I had to put it on the live stream <laughs> because I forgot. All right, so let me explain something to you and then if I forget, I know that I explained it. So if you look at my screen, it says food label review notes. So we're going to get into those today, but just briefly. So you'll need to go into Google Classroom and grab that, and um, I'll let you know when those no notes start. It'll be really close to the end of class. Now, these two, Food Lab, or Food Lab, Food Label Web Quest with Cami, you don't have to do both of these. You just pick one. One of them, you're going to use um, Cami. And the reason I had that, it, I don't know if you've used Cami before, but it's a way that this Web Quest is a PDF. So uh, if you use Cami, you can just write right on it. It's not a big deal. And that at the very end of the web quest is a VIN diagram that you need to compare the new label with the old label, but they have and what they have the same. Okay. And Cami's really useful for that. But 
some people, you know, that I've used Cami before with some of my other classes and some kids can't open it or they don't know what to do when they get there. So that's why I provided the food label without Cami. So like if you don't want to use Cami and you just want to use, you can turn it into a Google Doc and um, you can write on it and stuff like that. But the Venn diagram, you're going to have to figure out how to put your work on there because if you don't use cami then you won't be using it per se you know so just one or the other you don't have to do both it's one or the other okay all right i hope that made sense and then the note review uh, we're going to start today but all of this isn't due until friday just to give you a little leeway but we're going to work on the food label today uh thir thursday we're going to start finishing the notes and then going right into the my plate and remember what's due on thursday is the breakfast um so don't forget about that i don't know if we'll have time to present that on uh thursday just because i want to make sure i give you enough information for the uh exam that i possibly can um so we might push the breakfast not that it's, it needs to be done by Thursday, but we're, we might push it into next week to kind of go over that. Okay. So just keep that in mind as to what's up and coming. Uh, if there's anything in the chat, let me know. I'll kind of take a peek over here. Um, doesn't look like it. Does anyone want to, um, Mike, do you have any questions or anything about what I've talked to you about? Okay. All right. Um, your exam will be on Tuesday of next week. Okay. So it, ugh, that's going to cause an issue, isn't it? Do, 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 do. Okay. So I don't know if we'll have time to go over the breakfast or not. We'll just, we'll have to play it by ear. It's still an assignment I'm accepting, except you may not have to do the, um, presentation piece just because of time constraints but I have to talk to you about my plate because some of that's on your exam so um, make sure that the breakfast article um, Google slides get turned in before class on Wednesday and we'll see what we can do if we have any time to talk about that or not and then yeah the next time we meet after Thursday will be your exam boy that came up really fast um, your exam starts at 9.15 and goes till 10.45. So that changes a little bit about our meet time because we usually meet at 9.45. So you might want to document that somewhere because you don't want to show up late to your exam. Um, I will have a makeup exam on Friday. So if something glitches or something happens to the point where you're not here, you can always come to office hours on Friday or email me and we can figure out a plan um, for you to take it. So hopefully that all made sense. And now I'm going to go into my PowerPoint because <laughs> I've talked already too much. All right. So you're not going to need your notes right now from the um, Google Classroom. I will cue you when those come into play. But uh, who can remind me um, what were some of the dietary guidelines from the last time we were together? And you don't have to remember like, you know, the whole sentence, but what specific things can you remember or recall that um, we mentioned in the dietary guidelines? Can you think of something that was mentioned about those? Anything can be like a small little minute thing. What do you remember? Anything. Think back. There was a video I showed you. It was like a little video clip. Do you remember what that was for? Because that word would be part of the dietary guidelines. Or just think about diet in general. What would what would be a good thing to follow if you were going to watch what goes into your mouth? Anybody out there today? Hello? Am I in a cavern? Hello, hello. Anybody there? 
Anybody alive out there? I said not a lot of sugar. Okay, thank you. <laughs> you guys are alive. Great. That is an excellent answer. That's actually guideline number three. It's limit calories from added sugar and saturated fat and to reduce sodium intake. Uh, number one was to follow a healthy eating pattern across your life. Number two was to focus on variety, nutrient density, and the amount that you're eating. Uh, number four was to shift to healthier food and beverage choices. And number five was to support healthy eating patterns for all. So that's kind of what we talked about last time. And that's going to go right into the my plate. But I wanted to make sure I covered a little bit on food labeling. So, um, you know, if we had more time, I'd have, you know, they, we would dive a little bit deeper than we're going to be able to. But um, this is the biggest bang for the buck. So um, here we go. All right. So just a couple of FYIs. Um, this has to this happens to be on your test. So you may want to like either remember it or write it down or something. But um, a variety of vegetables you need to get from all the subgroups. So there's six subgroups. There's dark green, there's red, there's orange, there's legumes, and then there's starchy and others. Okay. So there's six subgroups when it comes to veggies. Fruits, the whole fruits are the best ones to grab. Apples, oranges, pomegranates are really popular right now. Um, just because they're just easy, quick, and go, you know, you can eat it, pitch it, you know, the core, whatever, and they're really healthy for you. So if you can grab a whole fruit, do it. Grains, at least half, which are whole grain. So in my next slide, it kind of talks to you about what a grain, what makes up a grain. So you have your bran, which is the outer coating, which is filled with, you know, lots of vitamins and minerals. And then you have part of the inner core, which is called endosperm. And that's where you get your starchy carbs, uh, protein, and some vitamins. So not really high there. And then you got your germ, which is packed full of, you know, vitamins and minerals and healthy fats. But when we're talking about, you know, like what McDonald's puts out in their their buns or you go to the store white bread, that is all a refined grain. It doesn't really have all the wonderful things that the whole grain entails. And, you know, we're not saying you can't have white bread. We're not saying you can't go to McDonald's and get their refined buns. But, you know, half of your grains need to be whole. Okay. It's better for you. And, um, you know, you just want to try to limit those refined grains in your diet. Okay, when you can, choose fat-free dairy products, milk, cheese, yogurt, uh, fortified soy beverages. Um, you know, when I go to the store, I like cottage cheese. So I always buy the low-cal. I can't taste any difference really in the product between a, you know, um, just a normal cottage cheese that has all the fat in it versus a low calorie, low fat. If you buy fat free, it does tend to have, uh, you know, not the best flavor. Fat does give food flavor. It's true. Um, and it's not as flavorful, but if you can stomach it, you know, by all means purchase it. Uh, when you buy cream cheese, Neufchatel is a third less of the fat. Tastes just like cream cheese in my book. And, you know, why wouldn't you make the healthier choice if you have to have uh, cream cheese. For protein, always vary or give get a variety in your diet. Uh, my kids complain that we eat chicken too much, which is probably true, but it is a leaner meat and, um, you know, it's very versatile. You can do a lot with it. Uh, red meat, not so much as, you know, being one of the healthier choices, but variety is key. Um, try to pick those leaner choices. Seafood, if you like seafood, you know, go crazy. Crab, crab, crab legs, shrimp, um, salmon, tilapia, you know, any of those things that are in the um, market there at Meyer. Uh, eggs are really good. You know, you can boil a, a dozen eggs and have them for uh, a quick little snack. It's full of protein. It's good for you. Legumes, beans and peas, nuts, seeds, soy products and the good oils, you wanna make sure that you have those in your diet. And then just like the dietary guidelines is to limit those saturated fats, trans fats, those added sugars and sodiums, keep them 
um, per day for the saturated fat. And we also talked about how to limit the sodium. So, you know, 2,300 milligrams, you know, you look at that number and you're like, boy, that's a lot of sodium I can eat a day. But it really, the equivalent of it is a teaspoon. So you really want to, you know, keep that in check because when you buy things, you know, check the sodium and always check the serving size because it might just be a cup that has the 23 milligrams, but the whole container is going to double that. So you got to be really careful about how you read the food label and how it impacts what you're eating. Okay, so now we're going to talk specifically about food labels. So um, this is going to require some participation today. So I hope you're up and willing. I don't like hearing crickets. It makes teaching difficult. So if you could help me out, that would be swell. <laughs> okay. So what you're looking at right now is the new uh, food label. Um, I'm going to have you do a little comparing contrasting in the next slide. So uh, hopefully you would be willing to do that. I hope. Okay, so what is required by the FDA to be on a food label? Um, I'm going to tell you as we move through, but we're first going to talk more specifically about the label, and then we're going to get into the requirements. So hang tight onto those notes because we haven't got there yet. Okay, so if you look at, um, did somebody raise their hand in here? I just heard a, Bryce, bring yeah, <laughs> uh, with buttons. Uh, I, for the food label assignment, is these are the answers to this all going to be in order? Or is it going to be like? Um, you mean the notes that we're doing? Yeah, like is it going to be in order? It's primarily yes. Um, you'll be able to keep up no problem. It's right. not like you know. And if you do have trouble, just reach out. All okay. Right. All right. Good. I'm glad that I heard that correctly because I wasn't sure if that was a hand or not. So I'm glad I was able to get your question answered. Okay, so we're not on those notes yet, and I'll let you know when we are. So don't worry about them at this moment. Like I said, the last two classes of nutrition, we've gotten to the notes at the very bitter end. So it's going to be a little bit. All right. So if you could help me just look at these labels and just tell me some of the things that you notice that the new one has that the old one doesn't. What, what do you visually see? Just use your eyes. What do you see that jumps out at you that is not on? or that is now on the new label. It's easier to find the facts. Okay, like what facts specifically? Like the calories and the protein and the other carbohydrates. Okay. And um, did you notice too that serving size was bolded? And they also put, um, did you you notice how they switched the serving per container to come first and then the serving size? So like if I was going through the store, you know, and I have a family of five, I would pick whatever this is and it would serve eight. So it would be good for my family. Um, so that's one reason why it's there first. And then a serving size is all these things that you see on the label. And I'm going to go over this again here in just a minute. But all these things that you see on the label uh, pertain to the serving size, not to eight servings per container, just to the serving size. So when it says eight grams of fat, if you eat two thirds cup, that means that it will have eight grams of fat. If you do carbohydrates at 37, that means in a two thirds cup, it'll have 37 grams of carbohydrates. But if you ate the whole thing, you would have to take 37 times 8 to figure out how many carbohydrates you actually are eating, okay? All right, and I'm going to kind of break that down for you in the next couple slides. So um, just let you know that. I am I uh, use notes on my slideshows, so I have to um, open my phone and go into my Google Slides so I can read the notes that I had there for the class. Okay. Here we go. All right. So you want to start with the serving uh, information at the top, and this will tell you the size of a single serving and the total number of servings per container or package. This is not on that note page, just to reiterate. Okay. And then next, oh, sugars. And then next, uh, you need to check total calories per serving. 
and container. So pay attention to the calories per serving and how many calories you're really consuming if you eat the whole package. If you double, double the servings you eat, you double the calories and the nutrients. So like, for example, I was working this out with you in just a minute ago. So if um, I ate the whole package, how many calories would I consume? So you, you're going to need your calculator, you know, for at least a portion of class today. So if I had, if there are 230 calories and there's eight servings per container, how many calories are in eight servings? Somebody tell me. Who are my math whizzes out there? 1,840. Thank you. That is a perfect 100% correct answer. So if I ate the whole thing, then I would almost be consuming 2,000 calories. Okay. And how many servings would that be? Like cup wise? Can you tell me if I took two thirds cup and added eight? What's two thirds cup? Eight times. What is that? How many cups? So if I took two thirds, 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 what would it be? Don't jump at it all at once. Anybody out there know that answer? Hello? Nobody knows that? Okay, so you would have five and a third because a third and a third and a third is a cup, right? So one third and then you add another third. So that's two thirds and then another third would be a cup. So that would equal five and a third cups for the whole package. Okay, little math for you. All right, moving on to the next one. So you want to limit certain nutrients. So you want to check those key nutrients and understand what you're looking for. So not all fats are bad and total sugars can include both natural and added sugars. Limit the amount of your added sugars, your saturated fats and sodium that you eat and avoid the trans fats. When choosing among different brands of similar products, compare labels and choose foods with less of these nutrients when possible. So I have a couple of links that I wanted to show you. This is from the American Heart Association about not all fats are bad. So you do need fat in your diet. Like when I was growing up, fat was bad. Like people were cutting fat out of their diet completely. And we have learned that fat is something our body needs. Okay, but there are goods and there's bads. So if you want good, try to stick to poly and mono. And those are the good fats. So you got your avocados, your salmon, your nuts here, your good olive oils, things like that. You want to stick with those because those are going to lower the bad cholesterols. Um, they're going to provide essential fat that your body does need. Um, and you want to limit these types of fats, the saturated kinds. So you got butter, heavy cream, you got cheese, bacon, I know, but you got to limit that a little bit because you want to decrease your risk of cardiovascular disease, okay? Um, and you want to keep your uh, bad cholesterol low as well. These things all increase those things. And then you want to lose the artificial trans fats, your hydrogenated oils, and your tropical oils because they do increase, increase your risk of heart disease and raise those bad cholesterol levels. Now, we all have had a donut, you know. I'm not saying cut it out completely, but you got to be conservative and you've got to eat health smart. Once in a while, it's okay to have a donut. It's okay to have your cakes, but know what you're eating and know how it's going to affect your body, okay? All right, and then the other one I wanted to show you was the added sugars one because sugar adds up. And so you wanna cut out any added sugar. So added sugars are sugars added to foods and beverages when they're processed or prepared. Consuming too much can hurt your health and even shorten your life. So the American Heart 
American Heart Association recommends uh, daily limits for added sugar. So we have, if we're looking at teaspoons, uh, women should have six and men nine. If you wanna make it into grams, 25 for women, 36 for men. And then if you wanna look at the calories, 100 for women, 150 for men. So the biggest thing that teenagers uh, are guilty of with sugary stuff is pop. Okay, so if you can try to avoid that or limit that, that'd be great. Uh, cereals, you got those, your granola bars, those do have a lot of sugars in them. Syrups, like if you work at a restaurant, I don't know if you've ever seen the syrup in the bag that the pop, you had the carbonated water to make pop. And, um, you know, basically what comes in those boxes are just syrup. And so that's why pop's not the best. Um, jams, jellies, drink mixes, candy, of course, your frozen treats, and your baked goods are all going to have a lot of sugar in them that you should probably limit. Okay, and then the next one that I have for you is on saturated fat. So it's just going to talk about the foods that have fat in them. So we're looking at um, like fatty beef, lamb, pork, poultry with skin, beef fat, lard, cream, butter, cheese, and other dairy products. In addition, many baked goods and fried foods can contain high levels of saturated fat. Some plant-based oils such as palm oil, palm kernel oil, coconut oil also contain primarily saturated fat but do not contain cholesterol. So any animal that you eat, however it comes, uh, is going to have cholesterol in it. Okay. So a green bean is not going to have cholesterol. Uh, squash is not going to have cholesterol. Apples are not going to have cholesterol. But if you eat bacon or ham or you drink milk or have an egg, those things will have cholesterol in them. Okay, so you just got to be careful of those. And then the last one is trans fat. And this one um, I think you'll find interesting. Whoops. Sorry, I got to click out of my slideshow so I can... <laughs> get that one because that one bar is there. Okay. So this one, I'm going to read a portion of it because I think it's important. So you got your deep fry in here, okay, which can have some trans fats in it. So there are two broad types of trans fats found in foods. There's a natural occurring and then the artificial. The naturally occurring fats are produced in the gut of some animals and foods made from these animals like milk, meat, meat products. Many contain small quantities of this fat. The artificial trans fats or the trans fatty acids are created in an industrial process that adds hydrogen to liquid vegetable oil to make them more solid. So the primary diet source for trans fat in processed foods is partially hydrogenated oils. So you want to look for them on the ingredients list on food packages. In November 2013, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration made a preliminary determination that partially hydrogenated oils are no longer generally recognized as safe in human food. Okay, uh, trans fats are easy to use. Easy to use. They're inexpensive products. They last a really long time. So the trans fats give food a desirable taste and texture. And many restaurants and fast food outlets use trans fats to deep fry foods because oils with trans fats can be used many times in commercial fryers. So these companies are food uh, venues or places um, that fry food, they don't have to change their oil out as frequently, which saves them money. So that's why they would want to use the trans fats. Um, countries like Denmark, Switzerland, and Canada um, don't allow or have jurisdictions on the trans fats. Places like California, New York City, Baltimore have reduced or restricted the use of trans fats in food service establishments. So, um, you know, just a little bit to talk to you about that. Um, trying to think if there's anything else I wanted to tell you. Trans fats can be found in many foods, including fried foods like donuts, baked goods, including cakes, pie crust, bacon, or sorry, biscuits, <laughs> frozen pizza, cookies, crackers, stick margarines, and other spreads. You can determine the amount of trans fat in a particular package food by looking at the nutritional facts label. So. Um, you got to be careful of those trans fats. All right, back to the presentation. 
Okay. So then we have get enough of the beneficial nutrients. So make sure you get enough of the nutrients your body needs, such as calcium, dietary fiber, iron, magnesium, potassium, and vitamin A, C, D, and E. Understand percent daily value. So the percent daily value tells the percent of each nutrient in a single serving in terms of the daily recommended amount. If you want to consume less of a nutrient, such as saturated fat or sodium, choose foods with a, with a lower percent daily value. So 5% or less is what you want to choose for saturated fat and sodium. So if you look at our label here today, we have saturated fat at 5%. So that is that they're saying that that's good. You want it as low as that. Okay. Um, sodium is at 7%. So that's a little bit high if you're look, trying to keep it between the 5%. If you want to consume more of a nutrient, such as fiber, choose foods with a higher percent daily value, so you want 20%. So if you look at the fiber right there, we're at 14%. So it's not at the 20 marker, but it is at 14, so, you know, that's pretty good. So you just got to be careful of that. Try to remember the 520 rule. Um, the bad stuff needs to be 5 or less. The good stuff, 20% or higher, is good. Okay, so that's just a good rule of thumb, the funny, the funny, the five twenty rule. So try to remember that as we go through. Okay, we're going to do a little bit of a math problem here. So I need you to have uh, a calculator ready so that we can work out this problem. Okay, now this problem is on your exam. So you need to pay attention to it because I want you to be able to get it correct. Okay. If at any time I confuse you and you don't want to ask me a question in front of everybody, even though we're not on camera, <laughs> you are more than welcome to come to office hours and I'll be glad to take the time to get you to understand what we're doing here. Okay, so just uh, 11 to 12 today and it'll take five minutes. That's all it would take. Okay, so listen to what I'm going to tell you right now, because these numbers are really important. They never change and you have to remember them. So in one gram of fat, there's nine calories. Okay, so if you look at the math problem, I'm going to figure out how many calories come by, um, how many calories come from fat by taking the total grams of fat and timesing it by nine, because in one gram of fat, there's nine calories. And I'm going to do the same with protein and carbs, because in one gram of protein, there are four calories, and same with carbs. So the nine, the four, and the four don't ever change, but you have to remember that you times that by nine and the other two you times by four. Okay. So I hope that made sense to you. So if I wanted to find out how many calories come from fat, I would take nine and I have to go out of presentation mode here. I have to take eight times nine. And what's the answer? Whoops. What's the answer? Eight times nine is what? Who can tell me first? I'll take anyone. Eight times nine. It's 72. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Whoops. I put that in the wrong spot. 72. Thank you. All right. Now protein. Protein is, let me get my little magnifier here. Protein is three and carbs is 37. Okay. So now I got that. Okay. So protein is four, no, three, sorry, and carbs is 37. There we go. Okay. So what's four times three? That should be an easy one. What's four times three? Oh. Easy enough. Boom. What's 37 times four? Anybody get that phone out there. Whip it out. 148. Thank you. 148. Perfect. Okay. So what I should be able to do is take 72, 12, and 148 and get either the exact calories that are on the label. It might be slightly off a little bit, but it's going to be close to 230. So if you take 148, 12, and 72, what do you get? Two thirty-two. 
232. Good. So it's really close to the 230 marker. So that's how you can, you know, add those up. Now I want to find out how much fat percentage is in the product and how much protein and carbs percentage wise. So when you try to find the percentage, you take the total calories and fat and you divide it by 230. Okay. So I'm going to divide all that by 230. So what is the percentage? And always remember your rules about decimals. So you always move it two places to get rid of the decimal. And then you always want to make sure that you round up if the third number is five or above. Okay, so if you take 72 and divide it by 230, what is the percent? Twenty nine. Uh, try again. You're super close. Seventy two divided by two hundred and thirty. Oh, what do you 31. get? Thirty one. Yep. There you go. And then if I take 12 and divide it by 230, what's the percent? Five. Okay, that's correct. And then what if I took 148 and divided by 230? 64. Yes. Okay. Whoops. So I could correct myself by adding this up, and it should be 100 if not close. Um, and so basically this product in one serving is 31% fat and 5% protein and 64% carbs. Okay. And so that's what, you know, a good way to kind of look at the things you're eating is how much percentage wise are you getting from it? Okay. So now I'm going to have you guys do the next slide. So you got to figure this out and tell me the numbers. So I'm going to use my little um, magnifying glass to kind of help you out with the numbers because it's really hard to see when I'm not in presentation mode. So um, I need to know what the number is for fat, protein, and carbs, and you just tell me, and then I will put it in the whoa in the uh, um, ingredients here. Let's see if I can. I got a little too large on me. Um, but, um, okay. So what is the fat? Give me the fat number. Just read the food That's label and tell me what the fat number is. What number am I going to put in my uh, equation? 15. Well, it's hard to see. It's 1.5. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> it's my fault because I can't. I I could make it bigger, but okay. Carbs. What's the number for that one? What do you see in the picture? Yep. And then what about protein? Yep. What about protein? I think. What'd you say? Did you say two for the protein? And then just remember 110 because we're going to need that number. All right. So I'm going to head back to the uh, equation. So fat, if you remember, was 1.5. And the protein was uh, 2. And then the carbs were uh, 23. Okay. So now tell me when you take those numbers, what is fat equal? Yep. 13.5. And then what about protein? What does that equal? 18. It's two times four. Oh. Eight. <laughs> yep. Eight. And then 20 th 23 times four, what is that? Yep. 92. Okay, so if you take 13.5, 8, and 92, what do you get? 1,100. Uh, 
Wait, 113.5. Okay, and our calories were 110, so it's really close. And then you want to take that number and divide it by the total calories, which is 110. That's what that TC means, just in case you're trying to figure out what the heck that means. Oops. Okay, and then tell me uh, once you figure it out. Remember your decimal rules and your rounding rules. Uh, what did you get for fat percent wise? 12%. Yep. And then what did you get for protein? 7%. Yep. And then what did you get for carbs? 84%. Right. Okay, so you should be able to add those up and they should be 100 or they're close to, okay? So that's kind of where those numbers come from. So if you look at, you know, your calories, you're getting calories from fats, protein, and carbohydrates. And you always need to remember that if you're looking at a product, in order to figure out how many calories are coming from that fat, you have to times it by nine. And same with protein and carbs, you have to times it by four. Those numbers never change, okay? Obviously, the other ones do because in every food label, there's going to be a different amount of numbers that you have to multiply. But don't, you know, understand where that total calories is coming from, okay? All right. Moving on to our next slide here. Let me pull it back up. And like I said, if any of you have questions about that and you don't want to ask me in front of everyone, please come to office hours. I am more than willing to sit and, you know, get you to understand what it is we just did so that it makes sense. Okay. Okay. So continuing on with the um, food label, there are some tips for getting as much health information as possible from the nutritional fact label. So remember that the information shown in the label is based on a diet of 2,000 calories. It does depend on your age, gender, activity level, and whether you're trying to lose, gain, or maintain your weight. Uh, the next one is when the nutrition fact label say a food contains zero grams of trans fat, but includes partially hydrogenated oil in the ingredients list, it means that the food contains some trans fat, but less than 0.5 grams per serving. So if you eat more than one serving, you could end up eating too much trans fat. And then the last one is that uh, the United States Food and Drug Administration regulates the nutritional fact labels seen on the packaged food and drinks. And in uh, 2016, the FDA released changes to the label to make it easier to see how many calories and added sugars are in a product and to make the serving size more realistic. So these changes are still being implemented throughout the food industry. So for now, you may see the redesigned version shown in the PowerPoint or possibly even the old version because they're still in limbo um, getting all food um, manufacturers to make sure that they include the new fact label. So it's still in process, but you know, more than likely you're going to be seeing those new um, food labels play out. Okay, so now is where you're going to pull up your uh, Google Classroom notes, guided notes. And um, we won't get through a ton here, but we'll at least get it started. Okay, and I do want to talk a little bit about the assignment too, so I'll do that right after this. So, um, so the food label requirements. They actually uh, developed the Food Labeling Act in 1990, specifically November 8th, that it was signed into law that all foods had to have a food label. And we'll talk about which ones don't, but we'll get there. Um, since the Act, Nutrition Facts labels, they have changed over time. You just saw how the old is now um, going to be obsolete and the new one's coming in. But the whole goal is just to develop an accurate and useful food label that consumers can use to make healthy diet choices. Okay, so that's why it all came to be. And um, you should be writing that in your guided notes. I think that's the first one, Bryce, um, that we are going to tackle right now. And then I'm going to go right into your assignment. So um, I'm going to give you about 30, oh, another hand, a 30 seconds or so to um, write that in. Yeah. Brianna, did you have a question for me? 
yeah do we just write like the fill in the blank things or do yes. we write okay no you just fill in the blanks yep okay thank you yep. no worries all right so do i need to throw that back up there do you guys still need it did i go too fast no news is good news okay jacob says yes put it back up okay so um try to get that in your guided notes we're going to continue with the guided notes next time we are together and we'll finish them and get those turned in and then i want to do a portion of the my plate because that's on your assessment uh, exam as well and i just want to make sure i give you all material that's needed uh, we may push a little bit into the new nine weeks with some my plate stuff that i might put on the uh um you know in the new semester um and i'll just you know add that onto the assessment as needed but just so you know we might continue a little bit into the new quarter with some of the information all right we good can i get off this i will be going back to it the next time we're together so if you didn't grab it all you can grab it then but i want to talk to you about the assignment really quick so i'm gonna i'm gonna go in with cami okay so if you look here it does give you whoops directions on how to get into cami and all that good stuff um, so that is there and available for you. But like I said, you know, some kids have difficulty maneuvering. So that's why I offered the alternative. They are exactly the same assignment. You have to do exactly the same thing. It's just one you can use Cami and the other one you can't. Okay, so I'm just going to go in um, and kind of show you. So if you're not going to use Cami, I don't know if you can see this, but up here it says open with Cami. So once you log into Cami, you should be able to use it. If you're not going to use Cami, then what you would do is just open with a Google Doc and then you should be able to manipulate it. So it's one or the other. You don't have to do it twice. Okay, so let me just kind of show you how this works. So up here where it says Nutrition Label Web Quest, this is actually a link. But if you want the answers to this individual section, you'll have to go into what's on a label. Oh, geez. It was there last time. Okay, why is this not working? All right, hold on. Okay, I guess it goes in through the other. But anyway, so you go here and it should tell you everything that you need to know. If it doesn't, go to the first document or the second and it should give you the information. So basically, let's just say, and this is not necessarily how it is, but let's say on the assignment, I had the nutritional facts label can help you and then I left a blank for all this stuff, okay? So all you have to do on your worksheet is add in, learn about, compare and monitor the nutrients. And then the worksheet would then continue in many foods in your diet. So that's kind of how you are gonna do the worksheet. And, um, Okay, somehow I lost everybody. I don't know what happened. What's the last thing you heard me say? Because I just went on and on, and then I was like, where is everybody? Oh, no one's here. So what is the last thing you heard me say? 
Anybody want to tell me? <laughs> okay. I couldn't tell you, Mr. Zepka. <laughs> I am so sorry. I don't know. I have no idea what happened. <laughs> okay. So, oh, someone's got their hand up. I hope no one's got their hand. I, okay, you don't remember. That's okay. Sorry. Oh, you're not presenting anymore. Okay, there's another one of my problems. <laughs> I'm falling apart. It's, the seams are coming apart. Okay, hold on. I got to see what people are telling me. So, I think I did. I think you're right. I closed the tab. I don't know what. Oh, my gosh. Anyway. Okay, so what I was saying is you can use Cami or not. Only do one or the other. And I'll check both spots for your work. So if you're not going to use Cami, and I hope this doesn't cause any issues, but um, it, I don't, if you turn it into a Google Doc, I want to see if you can access the links because that could be an issue. Am I on camera? Yes, so my, it's not opening. Hold on, let me get off camera. Okay, here we go. All right, so the tabs don't work if you use it as a Google Doc. So you might have to just, um, you know, kind of go back and forth because it's not going to work otherwise. But uh, in the, okay, I was like, I scared myself. I thought, oh my God, did I click out again? If it's in the PDF form, the links do work. So, like, it'll take you right to this. And all the information should be here that needs to go into that blank. But I found when I was working on it um, that sometimes I had to use these documents down here to get what I was looking for. So, you might have to do that. Okay. So, let's just look at this first uh, question. What are the four categories on the nutritional fact label? So, if I go and I look... Um, it should say that exact wording. What are the four categories? And it, you might have to, um, you know, go into a different um, venue where it should tell you what the four um, categories are. I swear it's here. You'll find it. It's exact. Let me try a different one. I swear it's here, everybody. I wouldn't lie. I did do this. Let's do this one, serving size. <laughs> serving size is based on the amount of food that is. So if I click on that. Okay, right there. Okay, so all you have to do is transform the words onto the line. The other one is there, I swear. And I will find it and put it in the um, stream just because I don't want you to think I'm sending you on a wild goose chase because it is there. Um, so that's all you really have to do. On that assignment is just fill in those blanks and I gave you the links here and like I said if you use Cami it, you, sh you should have more of a seamless writing um, but if you don't use Cami you don't have to just uh, work it without it is what my advice would be okay so I'm still presenting so that's good <laughs> so do you have any questions before I let you loose and uh, send you off. And don't forget to put your um, greeting or see you later, Zebka, in the chat just so I can make sure all that we're here. I um, can see you. And then, like I said, the next time we meet, we'll finish the notes and we'll talk about my plate and things like that. So, yep, you can check out. I'll talk to you later. Thanks for tuning me in today. And get your assignment done due December 11th, I believe, is what I put on it. So thanks for coming. We'll see you later. Alligator, nice.
Anybody have any questions why they're still here? Are y'all good? Okay, we got two more minutes together, so we can hang out. All right, we'll see you guys later.